Hey guys, so March is my birthday month. My birthday wish is to have you guys come over and follow me on Instagram. I post really cool stuff there, like this photo or this photo. If you want to help make my birthday month a little bit more special, then come and check me out. I'm Yovi's Home on Instagram. Hi, welcome to Yovi's Home. Today, in honor of International Women's Day, I wanted to share with you eight badass, fearless Dutch women. So if that sounds good to you, then why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. For the theme of International Women's Day 2021, um, their theme is leadership. And so today's Dutch word of the day is Leiderschap. Leiderschap. First up, Anna Maria van Schurman. Anna Maria was the first woman to attend university in the Netherlands, possibly even in Europe. In 1636, she enrolled in Utrecht University, where she attended lectures hidden behind a curtain so as not to distract the other male students. She was proficient in 14 languages. She was a scholar, a poet, and she was even recognized as a painter by the St. Luke Guild of Painters in 1643. She was also a really strong advocate for female education. Unfortunately, due to the customs of the times, she was not able to ever officially graduate from university. Jacoba van de Brande. She was the founder and the first chairperson of like the Physics or Natural History Society of Women in Middelburg. In Dutch, we would call it the Naturkunde Genotisch der Dames to Middelburg in 1785. Hers was the first all-female science academy in the world. Aleta Jacobs. Now, although she was not the first Dutch woman to attend a uh, university, Aleta Jacobs was the first Dutch woman to complete a university degree and graduate with a degree in medicine. After completing her studies in Groningen, she went on to be the first female physician in the Netherlands. And she ended up running a free medical clinic to treat poor women and children. Throughout her life, she fought for equal rights for women in the Netherlands. Matahari. Matahari was born to a wealthy family in Leuwarden in 1876. Um, she ended up abandoning her studies when she responded to a newspaper advertisement posted by an Indonesian-based Dutch army captain who was looking for a wife. So off she went, but a few years later she abandoned him too because he was an abusive and she returned to Europe and then she established herself as an exotic dancer. She was absolutely beautiful and she was a courtesan to men of influence and great wealth. However, once her dancing career began to fade, she became a spy for the German army during World War I. Eventually, she was captured and executed by a firing squad in France in 1917. Corrie Tendelo. Corrie Tendelo was, she was one of the biggest fighters for women's rights um, in the Netherlands. Now, she was not born in the Netherlands. She was born in Indonesia, but Corrie moved to the Netherlands when she was a small child. She ended up becoming a lawyer in Amsterdam. She became more and more involved with social movements and things like that. It was really important to her. She ended up working her way up in Dutch politics, where she quickly became known for her sharp speeches and her quick wit and her efforts um, fighting for women's rights. Corey advocated for equal pay for both sexes and for the women's rights to fulfill the same functions as men um, in the workforce. Corey is most famous for her pivotal role in abolishing the law that stated that married women were no longer allowed to pursue a profession. Unfortunately though, she died of cancer before she saw that her you know, passion project was a success and that the law was indeed abolished in 1957. She also played a really important role in obtaining um, voting rights for women in Suriname. Aunt Trus. Aunt Trus was a Dutch resistance fighter who brought Jewish children and a few adults into safety before and during the Second World War. 
Together with other people involved in the pre-war kinder transport, she saved the lives of, you guys, more than 10 thousand Jewish children who were fleeing anti-Semitism. After the war, she ended up serving on the Amsterdam City Council. Um, now, there is a beautiful statue dedicated to her um, and her work in Alkmaar, where she's from. And if you're ever in Alkmaar, I highly suggest that you check it out because it's, it's emotional and moving. Hani Schaft. One of the most famous Dutch resistance fighters in World War II was known as the girl with the red hair. This nickname belonged to Janetje Schaft, um, but she went by the name of Henny. Hani, sorry, Hani. Now, depending on who you ask, Hani was either a hero or a vicious assassin. <laughs> her fame stems from various books and movies that um, appeared later on describing her tumultuous life. Now, Hani, what she did was she helped Jewish hiders by smuggling stolen food and like coupons and identity documents and things to help Jewish people survive. Eventually, though, she joined a rather infamous resistance group for which she instigated various attacks on German collaborators and traitors. She dyed her famous hair, her famous red hair black to avoid recognition. Now, just before the end of the war, there was an agreement signed between the warring factions um, that they would not execute women. However, this rule did not apply for Hani um, when she was finally captured. The story goes that the first shot that they fired at her execution just kind of grazed her, after which I can just imagine her looking and being like, yo, I shoot better than you. <laughs> Anna Frank. Now, although she was German, I have to mention Anna Frank. I cannot exclude her from this list because she is very memorable um, as a woman in the history of the Netherlands. I'm sure you know that Anna used her diary to document her life in hiding um, in the Amsterdam attic during the German occupation in World War II. Um, her diary like covered two years from when she was 13 until she was just about 15, at which point she was captured. And unfortunately, Anna died in a concentration camp, but afterwards, her father was able to get her diary published. And today, the diary of Anna Frank is one of the world's most famous books, and it has been published in like more than 60 languages. And of course, the house where Anna Frank hid is now a very beautiful museum, or well, a very meaningful museum in Amsterdam called the Anna Frank House. And you can still visit it to this day when it's not, you know, Corona time. Fanny Blunkers Kuhn. Now, Fanny is nicknamed, and I love this, She, her nickname was the Flying Housewife. <laughs> she was the 30-year-old mother of two when she took the damn world by storm in the 1948 London Olympics because she was the most successful athlete at the whole damn event. She won gold medals in a bunch of different um, races, the 100, 200 meter, the 80 meter hurdle, the four by 200 or 100 meter relay. She also won five European titles, 58 Dutch championships, and she either set or tied 12 world records. In 1999, she was voted the Female Athlete of the Century by the International Association of Athletics Federation, which is really freaking cool. I also want to take this opportunity to shout out some of my favorite Netherlands-based female social media creators. Um, now, the content that these women make just inspires me, teaches, uplifts, or generally just creates like more good in the world. Um, so ladies, if I mention you, your videos are unique and original, and I really appreciate all of you, and I'm so, so happy that I found your platforms. So first up is Sarah Chetrit, who goes by I, Madam Expat, or Sarah Chetrit on TikTok and Instagram. Sarah's radical honesty and transparency on self-love and body positivity is absolutely inspirational to me. On her other account, she posts some of the most helpful social media, blogging, SEO tips. She's even created an SEO course, and I just... I just completely admire her. Next up, Crystal Yarsma. Now, Crystal goes by the name That Dutch Lawyer on TikTok. 
I admire Crystal because she is setting a fantastic example. As a single mom of two kids, she is gorgeous, she is feminine, and she is kicking ass in her career as a lawyer. Lucy, who is known as Book Doctor Lucy on TikTok, I really love her quirky videos and I always leave her page feeling uplifted. Whether she's like sharing a funny story about learning Dutch or taking us with her on like a run around Amsterdam, she she just always manages to make me smile and I appreciate her for that. Martha Wubbles, who goes by the name of Marth Watermelon on Instagram or Martha Wubbles on TikTok. She is funny, clever, smart, and like literally sexy as fuck. She makes me question all of my life choices. <laughs> and lastly, I want to talk about Joanne van den Herrick, who is a Dutch plus size model and body positivity goddess. She is love. Before ending today's video, I just wanted to take an opportunity to spotlight three female-owned businesses in The Hague or around The Hague that I support, and I'll leave links to everyone in the description box below. So firstly, I want to talk about my dentist, Dr. Charmaine Harris of One World Dental. She has the most beautiful, professional, customer service-oriented dental clinic that I've ever seen. Her team is diverse and female-led, multiple languages. I mean, if you're looking for a dental clinic in The Hague, there is nobody that I could recommend more than the team at One World Dental led by Dr. Harris. Secondly, I want to talk about my beautician and waxer, Bo, who is the owner of the BB Beauty Bar. Bo does the most precise and painless waxing that I've ever had. You guys, she does incredible work with eyebrows and nails, and I can't wait to see her this week now that things are reopening. <laughs> she was like the first person I contacted um, when I found out that we could go back. Lastly, I want to highlight Simona of Year in a Life Photography. She is a super talented photographer who does everything from family to fashion type of photo shoots. She is the official photographer of Yovi's Home Instagram, and we just love working with her. So you guys, that is my list of eight fearless and fierce Dutch women, five content creators, and three female-owned businesses. So I want to know, what do you think? Did I overlook anyone? I want to know who are your favorite Netherlands-based females, Dutch or not. Let me know in the comments below and I will check them out. Um, I also want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming over today. I really appreciate any time you spent with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Doei!